तो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द सिंगल डायमेंशन एरे तो इन सिंगल डायमेंशन एरे वी स्टोर द मल्टीपल वैल्यूज इन अ सिंगल रो लाइक अ क्यू वन आफ्टर एन अदर एंड वेन वी आर क्रिएटिंग अ एरे वी यूज न्यू की वर्ल्ड विच इज यूज टू इनिशलाइज द एरे एंड वेन वी राइट फोर तो इट मीन्स इट इज अ फोर इज अ साइज ऑफ द एरे दैट इज अ वैल्यूज इट कैन होल्ड दिस इज अ फिक्स साइज विच कैन नॉट बी चेंज दैट इज यू कैन नॉट स्टोर मोर देन फाइव मोर देन फोर वैल्यूज एंड इफ यू स्टोर लेस देन फोर वैल्यूज देन ऑल्सो इट विल टेक द साइज एज फोर एंड इट विल टेक द वैल्यूज एज जीरो टू बी स्टोर लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल If I store the value, so I have to store the value in the indexing position, and index starts from the zero position. Now, zero. So it means on the zero position, it is holding the value four. On the one position it is holding the value 7 on the two position it will hold the value 1 like this so we have initialized the four size so it can hold 1 2 3 4 values but index starts from the zero so it will take one less than the size that is up to the three if for example i store one more value so say in the index position 4 it is not giving me the compile time error because array will be initialized when main method will be called at run time it is right now it is not giving it is not checking what size you have given what values you are writing because it is not a compile time syntax error it is a run time so when we run the program then only main method will be called then only it will initialize the value 4 and store the values so it will give me the run time error so if i try to print this num index position 4 value so we it means we are retrieving the value retrieve so let us check if it is giving me any error compile time error no but when i run it then it is giving me the exception that is it is out of the bound exception we are adding greater than the size if i take the index position from 3 then i will get 9 9 if i do not store any value in index position 2 i am storing the value 0 to 4 1 to 7 and 3 to 9 but i am not storing anything in index index position 2 then also it will not give any error but when i print it the index position 2 it will by default take the value as 0 0 or if even if i am not storing anything index position 3 then also the size will remain 4 only it's not like that if i am storing two values it will take size 3 no this size 4 is fixed so say if i print 3 3 i have not stored 2 i have not stored but still it will not give any error but it will take the default value to 0 0 <coughs> so okay. okay. array is a special type of a variable which can hold multiple values in a indexing position starting from v0 and array can be of primitive type of the data or non primitive type of the data also that is we can make a array or 
of byte type, long type, double type, int type, or we can make an array of string type of the data also. A string is a class type of the data. Okay. Now, if I want to retrieve all, so we can retrieve the data from the index position 0, 1, 2, 3, like this. But if I want to retrieve all, to retrieve all, what I want, that how many values I have added. So I want to get the size of the array. To get the size of the array, there is one operator called length. Length is not a function method. It is a operator which returns the size of this array. We are not writing circular packets with it. It is not a method. And neither this num is a class reference. Int is a data type. Data type does not have any method. So length is the operator. Which returns array size. Okay. So if I just want to print and check what size it is returning. So let us see what size it is returning. So you see it is returning 4. So it means this size it is returning. Now if I want to retrieve all then I have to create a loop for int index starts from 0 index is less than size and index plus plus because it starts from the 0 and it will always be 1 less than the size so hence we have written less than size and keep on incrementing until it is less than size as soon as it will become equal to the size this loop will break and then inside it I can print the that is variable name is num and index position i so i value will keep on changing and then whatever the value of i is it will pass the value 0 then 0 index position then 1 then 1 index position 2 then 2 index position it will keep on running and will get the data So this is the size of the array and then it is printing all the values from the index position one by one. If I remove these two lines and instead of size, if I use this directly, then also it is going to the same thing. So it will reduce this line. So I can just directly write instead of size num dot length. So num dot length will return the size and again I will get the same result. Same result. Say if I want to store the string then also I can create a string array. Variable name any, any name. Then square brackets is equals to new string square brackets will not be using circular brackets when we are creating array again we are initializing a string but as an array not as a class 3 so again it means we are initializing the string type of array and similarly we can store the three values into it it's starting from the index position 0 If we do not store the value, then it will take null as a value. Like it was taking 0 in the int. If, if we are not storing the value, then by default it will take x uh, uh, yeah, uh, index position value as null.
initialized then again store and then retrieve variable name dot length so length will retrieve the size of the array as 3 from here Okay, understood. Now, in the single dimension array, when we are initializing, okay, understood. It is visible. Okay, so in the in the single dimension array, like we were initializing this particular array and storing the four values, then okay, it is okay. But say if I want to store twenty eight values. And I want to here I am writing 28 then I have to write this 28 times so it will make my work little bit lengthy so I can make it in a, in a shorter way also how instead of writing this thing we can or short way what is the short way int num array is equals to instead of writing new int square brackets 4 we can directly write circular uh, curly brackets curly bracket means we are storing multiple values to this array and again we can write so it is one and the same thing this is also right or this is also right. Similarly, in the string also, if we remove this one, and instead of that, if I write within curly brackets. it is one and the same thing but as per so it will it is also correct this is also correct both ways are correct okay so it is giving me the same result but as per our testing when we will be write using the arrays in our testing script then this approach above one approach is better than this approach because in this above approach we can at runtime pass this value how many how many items i want to add to the array dynamically i can keep, i can pass this value at runtime and then i can take the input from the user or we can take the input from the website and keep on adding the values to the array as per the size so this will but here what is the problem here we cannot dynamically add the values within the curly brackets so hence this approach we will be using more than this approach but for the understanding i have shown you both the things so i will i will be writing one more program in which i will be taking the input dynamically and adding the values so that you understand this concept also okay so this is a concept of single dimension array where we are making one row and we are adding the values one after another in an indexing position now second is a two dimension array. 
again i will make one more class edit so in a two dimension array we store the data in tabular format that is row column format so let us make one example for say character so now i am using two square brackets to initialize the array first square bracket specifies the number of the rows and second square bracket specifies the number of columns so it means we are again initializing the array by three rows and two columns so it means we are making a array of character with three rows and two column each when we store the data indexing starts from the zero the row number 1 will actually be treated as a index position according to the index will be treated as index position row 0 and column number 1 will be treated as a index zero column so i will write ch two square brackets is equals to character single character within single quotes where i want to store zero index row zero index column so this is for the row this is for the column actually it is first row but indexing starts from the zero similarly again i am storing a character b in index position 0 and index position 1 so it means this is the first row having two columns two columns second second is a index for column and first is a index for row the so first row is having two columns then again one zero actually it is second row but indexing starts from zero one so hence it will be treated as a one so it first is a row position so it is row number 2 actually and then column number 1 is actually column number 0 so this is a second row again 1 1 first row, row two columns second row two columns third row first column third row first column and second column so we have initialized three rows two columns one row two row three row with two two columns now how to retrieve it to retrieve i require the size of the row and size of the column in previous example when i was writing single dimension array there was only one row and i was adding the data one after another so here I, when i was writing length so length was returning this size but here now when i want to get the data how will i get the get the data get the data from row number 1 column number 1 column number 2 then go to row number 2 column number 1 column number 2 then go to row number 3 column number 1 column number 2 so it means there is there there is there are two increments going on one is the increment for row go to row number 1 go to row number 2 go to row number 3 and inside the row again we are making two increments go to column number 1 go to column number 2 so it means i have to get how many rows are there and how many columns are there so if i write over here ch dot 
length what i will get i will get row size here when i get ch dot length it will give me the this size 3 it will not give 2 neither it will give 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it will give me the row size so i will print it for your reference So let us run this much and check how much it is retrieving. So you see it is giving 3, this one. Now, if I write from here, ch zero int row 0 column size is equals to if i write here ch 0 dot length then what it will do 0 means this one 0 dot length means how many columns are there in row number 0 so it will return the column size in row index 0 Again, if I print it, row 0, It is retrieving two columns are there in row number zero position. So similarly, if I want to get the column num number of columns in row number index position one, then I will replace one and it will give me the number of columns in index row index one like this. And similarly, if I want to retrieve the number of columns in row index 2, I will replace here 2. So it will retrieve number of columns of each row. like this total rows are three and in each row there are two two columns which we have initialized above three two so only this is for the understanding purpose so i have written all these things so if i comment it out and if i make a loop so first of all i have to make the loop for the rows so i will write for row starts from 0 row is less than i have written over here ch dot length so ch dot length will return the number of rows and row plus plus so this loop will start the index position 0 and will keep on moving ch dot length will return the number of rows in a array now inside every row there has two columns so how i am retrieving that uh, go to index position zero row get column number zero get column number one go to index position of row number one and get the column number zero column number one so it means i have to make a nested loop so first internal loop will execute r will be initialized to zero then it will go inside and inside loop will execute
until internal loop gets executed it will not come back to the outer loop now what we have done column starts from zero and then we have written column is less than ch square bracket r so what is the value of r r value will be zero like here zero and it will retrieve the column number of number of columns in row number zero plus plus so it will move two times and when this internal loops get executed then only it will go above and r plus plus will make r to one then again it will come inside one then again it will execute two times and then again it will go up in that way it will keep on moving and we retrieve the data from the row position and column position if i again print it it is retrieving the values but not in a tabular fashion one after another so print ln means change line so if i remove ln from here and after every row i want to change the line so after the first record i want to change the line so i will write ln over here to change line again if i print it three rows are coming but there is no space in between a and b characters so again i will add the space like this and run it so it means it is row number 1 row number 2 row number 3 according to the index in the index means row index 0 row index 1 row index 2 and column number 1 column number 2 but according to the index column index 0 column index 1 so it is storing the data in that way and retrieving the data in a similar fashion again if i want to make a this code little bit shorter like we have done in our previous example so i can just comment it out and i can write char ch two dimension array two square brackets and curly brackets within curly bracket again one curly bracket one more curly bracket one more curly bracket so it means we are having three rows this one and inside each row two two columns Zero, one, two, and then zero one, zero one, zero one. Same thing. So we'll get the same result. But again, as per our testing script, we'll be using this approach more because here we can change the values. and dynamically add the values instead of this approach because this is within curly brackets i cannot add one more row or one more column dynamically programmatically so this approach will be more useful than this approach again one more example of two dimension array here if i writing two then we have fixed as we have discussed that size of the array is fixed you cannot change it so now when we have is added 2 the 2 is fixed that is we cannot change it every row will have two columns but it may happen 
that different rows may have different column sizes. So again, I will show that example to you. So let us make one more array of a string type. Again, I'm making two dimension array. Now I'm specifying the row size, but column is empty. I have not specified the size of the column of the column <coughs> specified the size of the row now if i write <coughs> what are we doing i am specifying that row zero will have one column size say three Again, we are specifying that row number one will have three column size like this. Again, we are specifying that row index 1 will have two column size. So when we are writing 3 and 2 uh, here, 3 and 2, so this 2 is fixed that every row will have two columns. It cannot be less than, it cannot be greater than 2. But if you keep it empty, then you can set column size for each row. for each row okay in that way on the left hand side you will be writing the index of the row and on the right hand side you will be writing the size now again we have to store the values zero row means first row zero index means first column zero zero so it is taking only one value so i can store only one value in it now second row first column it is taking three so I have to use one more second column and one more third column like this. So it means it is having three columns. So second row one 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 is having three columns. <laughs> Then again, two, zero, two, one. So it means again we have created two columns 
for the index position two. So we are having random different column sizes for each row. Then again we have to retrieve. So we can use this up retrieval. This one only. It will get the size of the row and then for every row it will get the column count how many columns are there one two or three and print the value accordingly you see three rows and having different column sizes it has a only one column it has three columns it has two columns single dimension two dimension two dimension if you have any doubt you can ask me now one more example i am making in which i want to take the size from the user dynamically at runtime and I want to add the values to the array by taking input from the user and then print it back. So let us do that example also in which we are making again a two dimension array and now I am asking from the user how many rows you want, how many columns you want and then adding the values to the array and then printing it back. Okay. So let's try to do it. So I will make one user defined method public, and now I am returning a string array. So method return if my method want to return multiple values so you can return it in the format of array so return type of the method can be array also so this is my return type get names so this is my get names is the method my user defined method like we have done up till now and it is returning like we have returning int and string so it was returning single value but now I want to return the multiple values so I can return it as an array form. Now here I am taking one input R which specifies the row size, how many rows you require and again I am initializing the array. A string say names is equals to new string. And whatever the row input I am taking, I will pass it over here. So it will initialize the two dimension array of names with the row size, this one, R. Now, column is empty again. So now I want to add the column size for each row now here if you see my last example the size was 3 so I was setting the column size 3 times if here the size is 4 then I have to set this column size for 4 rows 4 times if the size is 2 then I will set the values for this column 2 times only so it means whatever the size is I have to write this code that many number of times so similarly over here i do not know how many rows because it will be i will be taking it it as an input from the user so it can be four it can be five it can be two so whatever the number of rows is there i will make the loop for in row is starts from zero row is 
less than r whatever the size of the row is and row plus plus so whatever the number of size of row is i will make i have created the loop over here and then names row is equals to new string and the column size what we have done over here here we have written on the left hand side we have written the index of the row and on the right hand side we have written the column size how many times we have written three times because size is three similarly over here whatever the row size is we have to write initialize the column size for each row so on the left hand side again i am writing the row index and on the right hand side i am writing the column size but from where this column size will come so for that i will write the scanner class And scanner class inside the loop, I will write enter column size for row row. So it will take the it will give the prompt. <laughs> and take the input from the user it will take the input from the user and whatever the input it is taking it will initialize so it will it means it is setting column size for each row okay so we have taken this r as an input initialize the row and then according to the number of rows we have initialized the column for each row but our so we have done two things that is we have done this thing and we have also done this thing now what is the next thing that is we have to store the values so array is initialized but there is, there are no names so we have to add the names also because we if you are not adding the names this array will be black so again i am making for int row is equals to zero row is less than names dot length row plus plus then again int column is equals to 0 column is less than names length column plus plus again we have created the nested loop why because we have to add the values again we require add the values for index number 0 and 0 then add the index values for 0 1 0 2 0 3 so in that way we have to create we have to get the row and the column to add the values so again we are have created this two dimension array in which we are getting the row size and the column size for each row and then again i can give the prompt enter names for row this and column this so it is a prompt a scanner class we have already initialized 
so i will take the input name is equals to sc dot next we will take the input from the user and whatever the input is coming i want to add in this array names is equals to name so what it will do it will add value to array according to the index like this it will keep on adding the values according to the row and column and now we will return names because we have specified the array as a return type so return statement is the last line of my method so it is compulsory to write return and what it is returning names so what is the names names is a two dimension array of a string type this one so in this example what we have done we have written this method with this is a practical program which we will be using when we will be writing our testing script to add the multiple values from the web page to the array so hence it is important to understand so dynamically we are adding the number of rows how many rows we will be requiring and then for each row how many columns we are requiring and we are initializing it and then we are adding the values one by one to the array and returning so if there is any doubt in understanding i will repeat it again so first of all let me run it and then again i will explain and then if you have any doubt then you can ask me again so i will initialize this class and then get names and and in get names i have to pass this value of r so again i will use the scanner class over here prompt enter row then int row is equal to sc dot get int sorry next int and whatever the row we are getting so we'll pass it over here all right so it means we now now we are calling the method and when we are calling the method from here whatever the input we are taking from the user will pass as a argument to this r and then the body of the method will execute and it will initialize the number of rows and then in the for loop it will initialize the column size for each row one by one and then after the array is initialized it will again ask for the number names from the user and add it to the array in a nested loop one by one and return the value so now this get names will return the value so i will again return this value and it will return the two dimension array so hence we will get the Two dimension array in return. Now, if I want to print the values, so for printing, again, I require this two dimension array. So I'll copy it from here. instead of names we will use well
I will run it and then I again explain it. So when I run this program, main method will start and from main method it will ask enter rows. I will enter the rows and then it will pass this row value in this method and this method will be called by passing this value and this array will be initialized. So let us start from here enter rows so say i want to, to enter three rows now it has been initialized up to here now it is asking for this one enter column size for row number zero so according to this it will ask the column size for each row I will run it again this one. Okay, three. Then enter column size for row number zero. Say I want two columns. Enter column size for row number one. Say I want three columns. Enter column size for row number two. Say I want one column. So it is as per your choice. You are taking the input as from the user at runtime. So here three times it is taken. Then this loop for taking the names to add to the array so enter the names for row number zero column number zero for row number zero column number one for row number one column number zero like this So if you look at this console again, we have taken three rows, so it is three rows, one, two, three. Then we have entered two, three, and one. So it is taking two, and then three, and then one. We have added these values, Ram, Lex, for first row, then Hanu, Web, Rev for second and then Sook for the third. So in that way it is adding the values dynamically at runtime. So whenever you want to run this program, you can just run it and enter as many rows as you want. So I will take two only and then you can set the size as per your choice, say three and two and then you can keep on adding the values and it will add the values two rows has been created with three column and two column so hopefully you have understood today's session the meaning of array